Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right. But he gets in sticky messes just the same. He's curious and speaks his mind, but trouble's never far behind. It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind. I'm Paddington Bear. What did you want to show me, Jonathan? Shh. We don't want Mrs. Bird to hear us. Booster Bob and the Sky Commandos. Which one is Booster Bob? He's the leader. The evil Dr. Viper wants to rule the world. He has this huge flying machine with a death ray that can blow up whole cities. <laughs> oh, oh, Mrs. Bird, I thought you were Dr. Viper. Dr. Viper, indeed. Come along, you two. It's time you were in bed. <laughs> hey, he's getting away. Stop, you ne'er do well, orders Booster Bob. Yeah? What have you got there? Oh, hello, Mr. Curry. I was just reading this comic Jonathan gave me. Comic, eh? I haven't read a good comic since I was a boy. I didn't know they had them that long ago, Mr. Curry. Of course they did. I still have a stack of old ones in my cellar. Really? Can I read them? Ha! <laughs> read them? You can have them! For a prize. <laughs> stones out of your garden, Mr. Curry. Yes, well, I suppose you've done a passable job. Here you are, Bear. Thank you, Mr. Curry. I'm a martyr to my own generosity. Paddington, these comics must be over 60 years old. That's even older than Mrs. Yes, Paddington. Uh, nothing, Mrs. Bird. Um, would you like to see one? I remember this. Andy Ricicle and his magic tricycle. I used to love that. I bet it's worth a lot of money now. I heard the first issue of Booster Bob sells for over a thousand pounds. According to the paper, there's a comic book convention being held this weekend. Perhaps you should go, Paddington. You never know your luck. A thousand pounds? Booster there. Booster Bear, fighting evil everywhere. When you need him, he'll be there. Booster Bear. Helping people in distress, a superhero, he's the best. Conquers crime courageously, does it with integrity. Booster Bear. Dr. Viper caused his hair, mass destruction everywhere. Living in the world without a care. He's no Stop. match for Booster Bear. You ne'er do well. Booster Bear. <laughs> Booster Bear. Fly so high through the sky, staring evil in the eye. Booster Bear. Booster Bear. Booster Bear. Booster Bear. Sleepy head. We don't want to miss the comic book convention. Do you think Paddington will be able to sell the comics Mr. Curry gave him at that comic book convention? I don't know, but I can't believe one could be worth a thousand pounds like Jonathan said. A uh, th 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 thousand pounds? You never know. I'm sure lots of collectors saw the advertisement in the newspaper. Newspaper? Aha! Selling my comics indeed. We'll see about that. Not if I get them back. But how? That bear's crafty. He'll know something's up if I offer to buy them back. 
But if he doesn't recognize me... Gracious me! I didn't know you had to dress up. It's like a fancy dress ball. The dealers do that to drum up business. There you are. Ah, I see we have a connoisseur here. Can I interest you in issue number one of the Rabid Weasel? I'm not a connoisseur. I'm a bear from Darkest Peru. Darkest Peru? I expect you have some very good weasels there. Very rabid, I shouldn't wonder. Ah, um, tell you what, it's yours for 50 pounds. 50 pounds? It's in mint condition. Still got its original staples. Mm, unread, I would say. A bargain. If nobody reads it, it can't be very good. Well, well, what have we here? Hmm. Yes, these are all right, I suppose. I'll give you ten pence for the lot. Ten pence? They must be worth more than that. That man looks awfully familiar. Hmm. I've seen those bony legs before. That's an Andy Ricicle and his magic tricycle. And this is a Ricochet Racer Special Edition. Are these yours? Yes. No. I mean, I'll give you 50 pounds for everything. I'll give you 80. 90. 100. <gasps> 100. Hey! He's getting away. Stop, you <laughs> ne'er do well. Who's the bear? Who's the bear? Fighting evil everywhere. When you need him, he'll be there. Who's the bear? Who's the bear? My comics! What are you up to, Bear? Oh, hello, Mr. Curry. I'm just reading my comics. I thought you were going to sell them. I, I, I mean, I had heard <laughs> that you were going to sell them. Oh, no. I decided I could never part with them. I want to read them over and over, and that's worth much more than the £5,000 I was offered. <laughs> £5,000? You know, Bear, I've just had an idea. How would it be if I did some odd jobs for you for a change? We might come to an arrangement. Perhaps, Mr. Curry. After I've finished reading them, and I'm afraid that might take years. It isn't easy with pause. In the meantime, a glass of lemonade would be nice. Hmm. Isn't Ireland beautiful, Mr. Brown? Oh, yes, Mr. Gruber. I'm looking forward to seeing the giant's causeway. I hope he's not a fierce giant. <laughs> there is no giant. And even if there were, I'm sure he would be like all Irish folk, warm and friendly, and always ready to help. No, our destination is a fascinating place, full of gigantic columns of stone. It will be a perfect subject for my book, The World and Its Wonders. Uh, do you think we should take the top down, Mr. Brown? What a good idea, Mr. Gruber. I'll pull over. Oh, oh my! Oh, oh Mr. Gruber! Oh, oh. Ah, oh. Are you all right, Mr. Gruber? Yes, but I fear I have lost my glasses. I can't see a thing without them. I need to find an optician. I don't think you'll find many round here, Mr. Gruber. In that case, there's only one thing for it. You must take the wheel, Mr. Brown. I have the wheel, Mr. Gruber. It's the pedals that are the problem. I've got it. I'm ready when you are, Mr. Brown. I hope this works. I've only driven once before. Whoa! You're going the wrong way. Now, how would she know where we're going? <laughs> hey, would you mind where you're going then? Hey, what's what you're doing? Where do you think you're going, man? You were right, Mr. Gruber. These Irish are a friendly lot. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Perhaps it would be better if we get off the main road. The road rally has several checkpoints. Be sure to stop at each one. Good luck. Everyone ready? 
Mr. Gruber, I see someone we can ask for directions to the nearest optician. What's that noise? Hello? The Irish certainly are welcoming. That doesn't look like any way to drive. Well, you see, I've lost my glasses. Then you'd better get to an optician right away. There's one in the next town. Here's a map and directions. I'm afraid I can't read without my glasses. You'll have to follow them, Mr. Brown. Are you sure you can read and drive at the same time, young... Er... Uh... Oh, yes. Bears are good at map reading. Thank you for your help. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Are you having trouble seeing the map, Mr. Brown? Not anymore, Mr. Gruber. I do hope we can find a smoother road. Ah, that's better. Well done, Mr. Brown. Um, thank you, Mr. Gruber. And to think I had doubts about letting you drive. I fear that sounded like a flat, Mr. Brown. It's even flatter than one of Mrs. Bird's pancakes. I've had this sort of trouble many times before. I could change a tire blindfold. There you are. A job well done, if I say so myself. It looks very good to me. Except... you didn't see that you changed the wrong tire. Oh! I'll help this time. Now we can find that optician and then go to the Giant's Causeway. I think I could do with a bit of a clean-up first. If I remember rightly, there was a cloth on the back seat. What's happening, Mr. Brown? Nothing good, Mr. Gruber. <laughs> Hang on, Mr. Gruber. A barn. And it's a good thing we had something soft to bump into. Perhaps it would be a good idea if we go the rest of the way on foot. I have no idea where this is, but it's certainly very peaceful. Mr. Gruber, are you catching a cold? That wasn't me. But... It's a bull! Run, Mr. Gruber! Run! <laughs> I do believe we are so far off the beaten track, we'll never find our way. There's a man over there we can ask. Hello, we're... Right on course, boys. Here's the next set of directions and... Oh, I assume that since you've come this far, the other officials have turned a blind eye to your friends here. There should be only two per car, no passengers. Oh, we seem to have some guests, Mr. Gruber. <laughs> anyway, here's a couple of packed lunches to keep you going. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I guess you'll have to share. Good gracious. I'm beginning to think we'll never reach our destination. Mr. Gruber, what is it? The Giant's Causeway. Just like in the brochure. It must have been a huge giant to need this kind of a causeway to walk upon. There is no giant. It's just a natural phenomenon. Well, it certainly is a popular tourist attraction. There are so many people here. I wish you could see it too, Mr. Gruber. Oh dear, we're not having any luck today, are we, Mr. Brown? We'd better put the top up. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, your glasses! <laughs> ah, that's better. Why, right, that's odd. There seems to have been some kind of car rally going on. I'm glad we didn't run into troubles because of it. I must say, Mr. Brown, everything seems to have worked out rather well. Thanks to your driving. I can't wait to tell Aunt Lucy. Although how I'm going to get it all onto one postcard, I don't know. <laughs> Dear Aunt
Aunt Lucy. I've had the most exciting adventure with Mr. and Mrs. Brown. It all started a few days ago. Oh, Henry, this is such a beautiful wedding ring. What wouldn't I give to live it all again? Um, did you say the phone's ringing, Mary? No, oh, Henry. Henry, should I keep my wedding dress or sell it? Absolutely. <sighs> Mr. Brown, I'm pretty certain that Mrs. Brown has been trying to remind you of something. Shh. Yes, I know. It's our wedding anniversary. Your what, Mr. Brown? Our wedding anniversary. The day Mary and I got married. It's customary for husbands and wives to celebrate it every year. But Mrs. Brown thinks you've forgotten. I know. Isn't it wonderful? I'm pretending not to remember, and my plan is going so well. But she seems quite upset. Ah, yes. But when she sees the present I'm picking up tomorrow morning, a brand new piano, she'll be all the more delighted. But it's the weekend. Yes. I'll be right down. There's an emergency at the office. I have to go there right away, so I need you to arrange for the piano's delivery before Mary comes home from the air. <laughs> Here, take this check. The address is on the back. The delivery men must have it here before Mary gets home, or it really will look like I've forgotten. Don't worry, Mr. Brown. You're in good hands. Bexley's music. Here we are. My name is Paddington Brown, and I'm here to make sure Mr. Brown's piano gets delivered. <laughs> Ricardo Monte Brown, welcome. Thank you. I am here for my piano. Of course, it is ready, but before we go, could I trouble you for just a couple of autographs? Uh. <clears throat> Please, Mr. Bexley, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Don't you know who that is? It's Ricardo Monte Brun, the world famous pianist. And he's come to me, me to prepare his piano for tonight's performance. But Mrs. Brown has to get her piano on time, otherwise, poor Mr. Brown will. You'll find two delivery men waiting outside in dispatch. Show them which piano is yours and they'll take care of it. Now go. Excuse me, I'm here to make sure Mr. Brown's piano gets delivered. Ah, oh, let's see then. Uh, Brown, Brown. What size was it? Oh, it's for a very important occasion, so I'm sure it's very large. Here we go, Brun. You're right, it's the biggest one we've got. I'm such a fan of yours. And my daughters, they know all your songs. Enough. Please, I must have my piano. Of course. Follow me. My piano? Can't be too hard to find. That's strange. This is Mr. Brown's. And why does this say Mr. Brun? Those idiots! They took the wrong piano! Dear, I think something must be wrong. Maybe the trailer's loose. I'll have a look. Ricardo, please sit down. Salieri ate lunch on it. I am ruined without it. Whoa! Whoa! Check the coupling on the trailer. You mean this? Uh oh. Which way, boss? Follow that piano! Hey. Come on, just a little more! Stop your piano now, boss! Give me back my piano! Hey, Larry, 
Harry, it went uphill. Watch out, Sid. It's rolling back. <gasps> Don't worry, I know where they live. Safe and sound, Mr. Brown. Excellent. Bring it in. Bring it in. Oh, no. Someone has made a terrible mistake. Henry, you won't believe what I just saw at the hairdressers. Oh, Henry, it's gorgeous. I love it. Uh, uh, happy anniversary, dear. Madam, that piano is mine. Ricardo Montebrun? Is it really you? Thank you. Mary, there's been a mistake. I bought you a piano, but it's an upright about half this size. Thank Mr. Brun, you. it is their anniversary. And I make my living from that piano. Thank you. Ah, this sneezing is driving me crazy. I think I know why you're sneezing. You do? Oh, tell me. I'll do anything to stop it. I have fur, and lots of people are allergic to me, especially when I haven't had a bath. You're right. I should have known it was those furs. And to show my appreciation, I shall play an original Ricardo love song. Mrs. Brown loves her new piano, but I think she loves Mr. Brown even more. P.S. I'm sure you've never heard of Ricardo, but you should give him a try. <laughs> oh, Paddington. <laughs> <laughs>